Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we're going to be taking a look at FIAS and factory to you discount stores. Now I'm not actually sure if it's pronounced FIAS or FALAS. I'm, I may be pronouncing it wrong. I've heard it pronounced both ways, but both that chain and factory to you are owned by a parent company called National Stores Inc. National Stores Inc. was founded in 1962 in Los Angeles, California, and in August of 2018, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. When they filed for bankruptcy, they had originally said they would be closing a little over 70 stores, but then that number expanded to over 180. Now, from what I can tell, those 180 ish stores uh, are made up of the FIAS stores and the Factory to You stores. National Stores Inc. actually operates a little over 340 stores total. FIAS and Factory to You are not their only nameplates. National Stores Inc. also operates stores under the names FIAS Paredes, Conway, Wieners, CW Price, and Anna's Linens. It gets even more convoluted because it was announced today that out of the bankruptcy, a new entity will be formed named Fias Stores, and they'll be purchasing 85 of these stores from the bankrupt National Stores, Inc., and keeping those stores open. Now, this store doesn't have any store closing signage or anything like that up, so I'm guessing this is going to be one of the stores that remains open. As you can see from a lot of the footage we've been looking at, though, this store is a mess. Everything is very worn out and beat up, and it doesn't look like it's been taken care of really that well at all. And this is not the only store that we saw that looked bad like this. We actually saw another store that was being maintained so poorly by the parent company that it actually made the local news. It wasn't like the employees that were at this store weren't working. I don't think store employees are the problem. I think the problem is that the parent company has been struggling so badly that they haven't had enough money to keep the stores properly staffed or maintained. Their Christmas shirt selection was pretty interesting. This is stuff that I'm more used to seeing at the flea market and not at a retail store. But you can see behind those shirts, the display is just really beat up and falling apart. The store was in such poor shape, we wanted to see what was going on outside behind the store, and we were pretty surprised with what we found out there. So I think we found somebody's little home back here, I guess. Behind the store. And there is just bird pieces everywhere. It's like wings. God, I hope they weren't eating the pigeons. It's like they got up there and like tried to make themselves a roof or something. Ugh. Random couch. Oh, somebody dropped a shit back here. Nice. <laughs> Gross. There's a fucking turd, man. Awesome. There is somebody living over there. Don't want to get too close. This wasn't like at the Kmart. There were people actively living back here. This is just another sign that they're really not taking care of their stores when they've got active homeless camps behind them. And it looks like we woke him up. 
Remember the second store that I said we visited that was so poorly maintained it made the local news? Well, here's a quick look at that local news report. It is like working in a sweatshop. That's what employees of One Valley Store are saying. Their air conditioning has been out for months. ABC 15's Zach Crenshaw is there live. And Zach, both customers and employees reaching out to us asking for help on this one. Because nothing was being done, they have been waiting for months. In fact, employees tell me they haven't had air conditioning here at this store for all of 2018. And today, we came here to get answers about why this was such a sweltering shop. Inside the Chandler Factory 2U store, they advertise hot items. But what's hotter is the actual store. As you can see, there's an air duct here, but there is no air conditioning. It is incredibly hot back here in the corner of the store. When I use this heat gun, it says 98 degrees. Employees have been forced to stand in the sweltering store for months with only two frivolous box fans and a portable AC unit. Sir, I don't even know how they stand in there. I think it's hotter in there more than out here. They're hot, they're dying, they're drenched. Destiny Via knows the struggle firsthand. I was here for six months. With a baby boy on the way, yeah. she quit last week. It's Constantly getting sick and therefore it's not good for me nor my child. I called the landlord company and they said in the agreement it's factory to you that's responsible for fixing the AC and their ownership group FALAS, which is filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, employees tell me OSHA has been here twice this year, but so far nothing has changed after they came. Also, the ownership company FALAS, well, they know about it. Employees say a regional manager was sent here a few weeks ago to, quote, prove it could be done working in this building for a full eight hour shift. We'll stay on top of the company and let you know if air conditioning is restored to the building. Well, I can tell you, I don't think the air conditioning has been restored to the building. Although it wasn't hot inside, it was definitely muggy and felt like the air wasn't circulating at all. Now this store is closing. You can see here they've got a list of these store fixtures that are for sale. And I actually used to live right down the street from this store. That's how I'm familiar with it. And Factory to You is actually a name that I'm familiar with from my childhood, whereas the Fias name is one that I'm not familiar with. And you can see this store is even more disheveled than the last one, but I think that's more than likely because of this closing sale. And it doesn't look like they've hired an outside company to do their closing sale. It looks like they're just having the normal store employees handle it. Mark and I both said to ourselves that the store felt kind of muggy and gross inside, and then I was really surprised to see that news report while I was doing research for this video. It's like a fairly old Star Wars school set here. That shows you how much they were struggling though. Rather than fix the air conditioning, they sent a district manager out to prove that it was possible to work in the store in those kind of conditions. I mean, it was possible to cross the Oregon Trail in wagons way back when, but that doesn't mean people are going to do it now. They're going to use cars and do it in comfort with modern amenities. That's, that's completely ridiculous that they were operating the store in the middle of the summer in Arizona without air conditioning. I've never seen so much grime built up on floors before either. That's really bad. And I've been to quite a few store liquidation sales at this point. But again, I can't blame the employees. It must be completely demoralizing to work for a company that won't fix the HVAC system and would rather send a district manager out to prove something stupid. And you even complain to the news, customers and employees both, and it makes the local news in a major market and it's still not fixed. I don't think anybody could expect the employees to scrub the floors in this store when it's 100 degrees inside of it. Like I mentioned, I used to live down the street from this store. I've been in this store a few times a few years ago and it wasn't this bad back then. I had to strongly discourage Mark from buying this and explain to him several times that his head was too damn big for this children's beanie. It is kind of neat though. I feel like I see random beach toys at every store liquidation I go to. I've, I know I've seen this kind of stuff at several Sears liquidations.
Wonder where the R went. It is good that 85 of the original 185 stores that were going to close are going to be saved. I just hope they're able to work through some of these maintenance and store employee safety issues that they're having. I haven't seen racks like that in a long time. I remember hiding in those when I was a kid from my mom while she was trying to shop for clothes at places like Mervyn's. It doesn't look like they've done the typical thing at store liquidation sales either where they mark all the merchandise up before applying the percentage off from the liquidation. So there's a lot of things in here that are just surprisingly cheap. Including things like this really classy t-shirt. Straight out of 1998. <laughs> It's only a few dollars, plus 30% off of that price. Man, everything in this store down to the fixtures and the flooring is just worn out. Maybe it is time to put this store out of its misery. Just this factory over in the wall over there, the whole 2U is missing. Do you want to feel sexy? Well, here's the product for you. <laughs> I'm spray some sexy on while I uh, wear these retro sunglasses. Look, there's the uh, box fan there from the news story earlier. This was interesting too. This is a factory to you store, but we actually found a Faya Stores shopping cart inside of it. Stuff like this always cracks me up too. I see things like this at Ross as well. It says it was designed in New York, but then when you flip it over, it's made in China. Do you have any memories of shopping at factory to you? or Fias discount stores? And if you're a current shopper there, is your store one of the ones that's closing or is it one of the 85 stores that's being saved? I'd be interested to know down in the comments below. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey, thanks for checking out my video on Fias and Factory to You. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And also, if you got a minute, why don't you watch one of these other videos here? And lastly, make sure to follow at the social media links there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.